Uh, thank you very much. I'm not quite too sure how to follow Lord Adonis, but I shall give it my, uh, my very best shot. Um, what I wanted to do is just spend a few minutes talking about how we are thinking about a number of those challenges, how we've actually been um, uh, adopting a very similar perspective to our stations and where we've been trying to uh, take that thinking within Greater Manchester. And actually, it starts in terms of the way in which we are looking to go about guiding the future of our city region in Greater Manchester. Uh, Greater Manchester is now bigger population-wise than it ever has been in its entire history. Uh, we've reversed the trend of depopulation that we saw in our city region. We have uh, a bold city centre again, uh, and we have new bold neighbourhoods that we have already started to create and that we have more plans for. And right at the heart of that approach has been transport. The investment that we've made in our transport system over the past 20 years has been a critical component um, in looking to drive that forward. And now, uh, under the new mayor of Greater Manchester, uh, we've set out a very clear agenda based around a strategy that looks to enhance the livelihood of our population in Greater Manchester, that looks to uh, make the most of uh, the opportunities that we can offer for our people in Greater Manchester. Uh, we have one spatial plan for a city region, uh, never attempted before outside Greater London, and actually we're looking to move it quite a bit further uh, than has been the case um, in Greater London uh, through the Greater Manchester Spatial Framework. I'll talk more about that in a moment. And sitting right in the middle of it, we have our 2040 strategy, designed to think about the transport assets that we have in our city region and how they can best contribute to those wider objectives for our people and for our place. Um, and we've recently just started to move uh, that debate on to the next stage. Uh, we first published the Spatial Framework for Greater Manchester around two and a half years ago. Uh, and at the time, we had a mayoral candidate uh, called Andy Burnham, who took one look at it and said, you know what, I don't really like it. Um, it doesn't really address, address issues of density. I can't quite see the relationship between connectivity and growth in the way that I would like to see it. Can we start again? So we started again. Uh, and we are now out to consultation in Greater Manchester uh, with a spatial framework that really has transport at the heart of our thinking in terms of placemaking. We're talking about new development sites now that are based around public transport corridors, that are based around town, town centres, clustered more around those sta stations, thinking about those stations as hubs in the way that Lord Adonis um, described before. And we see that urban renaissance as providing an even greater rail renaissance for us uh, in Greater Manchester. We're now bringing forward with a passion and with energy uh, the case for new rail stations. We haven't built a rail station in Greater Manchester since 1999. Um, and we are now bringing forward, uh, with, again with real passion, uh, the case for a new metro-style operation of rail services across Greater Manchester, complementing the longer-term agenda around HS2 um, and NPR. And it's not just directly within the railway that we see the opportunity for better proximity between transport uh, and regeneration. The scene behind me here is, is Stockport Town Centre. Anyone who's visited Manchester will recognise it, hopefully from the railway uh, viaduct. So sitting down there in that attractive circular, it's not quite circular, um, hole is, is the future transport interchange for the town centre. Originally designed just as a plonket in tr uh, transport interchange, basically updating the bus station that we had there. But then we took a step back and we started to think about it a little bit differently. Stockport wanted to bring forward a residential development, reinvigorating some of the uh, redundant mill buildings that we had in that area. Well, what about if we tried to put that together as one opportunity? And that's what we've done here, walking forward a transport development scheme supported by the government's uh, growth deal uh, and a regeneration scheme, which will now be supported by the first mayoral development corporation uh, in Greater Manchester and with the railway station immediately round the corner sitting at the heart of um, that area within uh, the mayoral uh, development corporation area. And it's that type of thinking that drove our thinking. It's the kinds of observations that Lord Adonis made before that drove our thinking around looking to make a new devolved case 
uh, for change around our rail stations. We have 97 rail stations in Greater Manchester, big, small and in between. And frankly, none of them really look, none of them really feel like the rail stations that we would like to see in our communities. Actually, the one that most talks to our communities is Earlham Railway Station. And Lord and honest, I'd love to take you there sometime because you may be able to add it to your list. A community developed railway station redeveloped um, into its old pomp, supported uh, by a local entrepreneur. The, the founder of Talk Talk comes from Earlham and felt that the railway station was letting down his old community. And he's shown uh, what a railway station can, can do in terms of uh, giving you confidence uh, into uh, a community. What we proposed was to try and move from that short-term management of railway stations to a local long-term management approach. There was a very long case for change that we put into government, but actually it was really simple. It was about long-term investment and stewardship of our railway stations, building on the existing model that we provide as TFGM. It was about moving from thinking about railway stations to transport hubs, exactly the point made before. And it was about repurposing the station for retail, community, educational, and also uh, residential de development and we put the case to change to government and the Secretary of State said do you know what I agree there is a problem but I don't agree with your solution so we didn't give up um, we came back and we said okay well, well we'll start to think of new partnership ways of working with the rail industry instead because we want to achieve those outcomes and we're happy to test any model um, that's going so here's here's an example um, of a one public estate agenda that we have underway at the moment just five stations in the area of Stockport in Greater Manchester. Those five stations, just by thinking about the railway land and adjacent public estate around that railway, we're now looking to bring forward six to 700 dwellings in the right location, clustered around railway stations, doing exactly the sorts of things that we want them to do. And now there's a healthy debate underway around how can that release of land then start to play back into uh, the right investment um, around our railway stations. And I wanted to start with the small stations because some of the story around the small stations I think then echoes when we think about the bigger stations. Uh, and again, Lord Adonis made the point before around Manchester Piccadilly and he's absolutely right. The last time we spent any meaningful money on passenger facilities in Manchester Piccadilly was just before the 2002 Commonwealth Games that came to Manchester. And frankly, it was a tarting up exercise. We spent about 30 million, I think, at the time um, on some better travelators, a bit more reach out to the outer platforms, um, the first wave um, of retail development within the station. And, and that's it, really, um, it, within Manchester Piccadilly. Well, there's the opportunity now for us to think differently around Manchester Piccadilly because of what it will be in the future. Um, and that sort of thinking is the thinking that drove us to produce the growth strategy that sets out the level of ambition that we have for our two principal hubs on the future HS2 network at Manchester Piccadilly and at Manchester Airport. And I'm going to focus on Piccadilly, but it's a similar story in many ways in the context of the locality at the airport as well. How do we come up with the right station plan? How do we make that relate to the regeneration around the station? How do we make sure that we don't just deliver the benefit of connectivity to one point, at a station through the right wider connectivity out of that station? And how do we make sure that we use the opportunity to drive the skills agenda and local supply chain agenda? And if we look at Piccadilly, here's, here's Piccadilly HS2, sitting in the middle of a regeneration area. And frankly, whenever I look at those white blocks that we put on that, um, they feel a bit meaningless at the moment. We're putting up 65 storey towers now um, in, in central Manchester. So the opportunity around this station um, is immense. I may not be able to quite rival the towers that you will see around Euston shortly in the presentation to follow. Um, but the, the, the opportunity around Piccadilly is absolutely uh, immense. And there is a real opportunity, and we set this out within our growth strategy, for that development to contribute directly back into the facility, back into the railway, back into the, the connections out of that railway station uh, and across the conurbation. But that requires coordination. Again, absolutely back to the point that was made before. Who holds the ring in making a railway station really work? 
because all of these entities have an interest in that, that station at Piccadilly. Manchester City Council, they want that station to relate to the city around. They want to get the public realm right around that station and right into the regeneration area. HS2 want to run a big train fast into that station. Network Rail are already running 14 platforms, hopefully in the future 16 platforms, I'll get that plug in quickly, um, uh, into uh, Manchester Piccadilly. We've already talked about the fact that that traditional rail facility is in need of regeneration. We run, we run trams into that station. We want to relocate those trams and, and grow the size of the facility inside the station. And Transport for the North want to run Northern Powerhouse Rail into that station. There is a risk that we will build the house that Jack built if we all do that in our own ways. And the challenge around those growth strategies is how we can all collectively hold the ring or possibly through a new entity, hold the ring um, in order to uh, make that work. Because ultimately, we're all going to the Department for Transport for a conversation about funding. So surely we can make that funding work best through the right coordination. And, and I think that debate around coordination is fundamental when we think about stations uh, in the round. What this um, very simple uh, diagram looks to demonstrate is how we tend to come at rail planning from a national level, but we come at placemaking from a local level. And how do we try and strike the right balance between um, the one and the other? So to conclude, many of the ideas that I've talked about here aren't new. Lord Adonis commissioned work to look at many of these issues a decade ago. Frankly, when I first got involved in this game and got very excited by the work um, around um, the, um, to, the, the uh, report towards an urban renaissance 20 years ago, we were really telling the same story then. But I think the difference is that the stars are now really starting to align around the opportunity here. Our cities are starting to grow fast, not just here, but our other cities um, around the country. The rebalancing agenda is around us and there is a real opportunity to respond to it. There's an opportunity for us to start to build housing markets in the way that we want to see housing markets come forward um, as good city planners and as good transport planners. And right now there are two great opportunities in the Williams Review and HS2 to start that off. We are very keen to see that opportunity seized to the max and I hope that we can work with colleagues in the room to achieve that. Thank you.